When your plans are so solid, your plans are there, that you are going to do this, and it's as concrete as a shape itself, a thing itself, like in, in physical form, that's a strong intent. Irada, uh, uh, can be in your head, but never manifest. And you don't even plan to execute it. So it's the kind of person that says, yeah, I should become better. I plan to. I plan to start praying, but they never really start praying. Or I, I should be studying. I've made the intention that I'm going to work out. Or I made the intention that I'm going to start studying a little bit more. And that intention is there, and after 10 years, you have the intention still. Yeah, yeah, I still got the intention. It's stored pretty well. That may be irada, but it's not what? Mashiach. It's not concrete. So Allah speaks to the person here who's made the concrete intention. Maybe the thought crossed their mind, some irada was there, but it didn't manifest. But the people who will be able to set themselves straight, who will get reminder from this Qur'an? The one who truly wants has mashiyah. They've made that intent, that, that concrete intent coming from shaykh. Okay? لِمَنْ شَاءَ مِنْكُمْ أَنْ يَسْتَقِيمُ But even in the end, your mashiyah, your concrete intent is dependent. No matter how strongly we, we think our intention is, it is not the be-all, end-all. Allah says, وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ What concrete intentions are you going to make on your own anyway? إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ Allah. Except what Allah wants. What concrete intentions Allah has made for you. Right? So you make that intent, and this is actually part of the summary. One of the summaries of the Qur'an is, Allah Azza wa Jal illustrates a balance between divine will and human effort. The whole Qur'an is a balance between divine will and human effort. Who was, whose effort was mentioned first? In this, لِمَنْ شَاءَ مِنْكُمْ أَنْ يَسْتَقِيمُ وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا يَشَاءَ اللَّهُ Whose effort, whose intention was mentioned first? Ours. You do your part. You make the intention. You make it concrete. You start taking the first step. Allah will make the next thousand steps easy for you. You think you're going to do it on your own, you will fail. But you think Allah will do everything for you, you will fail. You have to take the first step and then put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there's this balance between what we owe to Allah and what Allah's help, when Allah's help will come. When you don't understand this balance, you get two imbalances. On the one hand, someone thinks they can do everything on their own. They're independent. Istighna. On the other hand, you have the person who doesn't do anything and says what? Allah will do it for me. Whenever Allah wants, I'll become good. You know, Allah wanted it for you, so it happened. He didn't want it for me, so it didn't happen. No, no, no. You didn't want it, so Allah didn't want it for you. وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ The Lord, the Rabb of all of the worlds. And this, this word in the end, the word Rububiyyah in the Qur'an is, is associated constantly, constantly with hidayah, with guidance. So what are you going to want that your Lord doesn't want for you? And this in, in, in the end is the guidance. Just finally, inshallah, concluding how we started the surah and how it concludes. The surah begins with some of the most enormous manifestations of divine will. Right? It is by divine will that that's mountains will start just floating around, just casually walking around. And that the sun will be wrapped up. And that the stars will collapse. And they'll lose their texture. And that the sky will be peeled like the skin of a camel. All of those things are a manifestation of divine will. So what is our will compared, and the will of the kafir even? What intents are you going to make compared to the will of Allah? إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ His lordship over the worlds is illustrated in the beginning of the surah. Another beautiful comparison here, the beginning says of what's going to happen on this world, in this world. And the end, just after you've heard all of this, it just ends with a simple question, أَيْنَ تَذْهَبُونَ Where are you headed? After hearing all of this, where, what's your conclusion? Where are you headed? So Islam wants from a person, what, what it demands is that we don't just live in the world of abstract ideas, where we hear interesting philosophical concepts, but we never actually think about them, implementing them in our life. Islam is demanding action. If you find something, you find the truth in it, you don't just say, oh that's interesting. And then just walk away. No, no, no. Where are you headed? Where are you going? This is something that's supposed to demand a change from you. So it, 